I want to thank Judy Johnson, who always does such a fabulous job with reading, and Karen Drucker, Gary Lynn Floyd, and our music team for the fabulous music for today. Today, as we begin the holidays, I want to talk about joy. This is the season of the year that brings me more joy than any other time of the year. I know many people don't necessarily love this time of year, and they might see it as a consumer haven or too many obligations. And for me, it's a time when most people are kinder and more filled with smiles and appear to be more joyful than the rest of the year and treat others more generously and more kind. So before we delve into the message, here's your question for the week. What's the one choice that you can make today to remember joy is not merely an emotion. Joy is in us and transcends circumstances and connects us to the divine. And it's a cosmic solvent that unifies all differences. One more time. What is that one choice you can make today to remember joy is not merely an emotion. Joy is in us and transcends circumstances and connects us to the divine and is the cosmic solvent that unifies all differences. I adore talking about joy. It's such a wonderful feeling. Rick Warren gave this definition of joy, which I find is one of the very comforting ones. Joy is the settled assurance that God is in control of all the details of my life. The quiet confidence that ultimately everything is going to be all right and the determined choice to praise God in every situation. If you believe in divine order, which I do, and accept that there's no spot where God is not, as Rick said, we have assurance God is in control of all the details of our lives. So if we embrace that, why would we not have that quiet confidence that ultimately everything is going to be all right? I mean, God's in control. Wow. Hey, I'm the first one to say that it often feels like everything is not going to be okay. And what I know is when I surrender to the divine, whatever is disturbing my peace, my peace returns. So therein lies the choice to live in discontent or to praise God in every situation and surrender to the peace that is available from knowing God is in charge and that God is always for me. So everything, not just some things, are for my good in some way, even when I can't see it that way at the moment. Joy is the essence of our spiritual journey because it's a profound state of being. It transcends circumstances and it does connect us to the divine. When we live in and from joy, it's not merely an emotion. It becomes a profound realization of our interconnectedness with all of life, with all things. And when we remember that we are all one, that we're all connected, it's so much easier to let go of hurt feelings, to recognize that everyone is doing the best they can at the moment, and to surrender to whatever the divine is placing on our earthly path. In the Bible, Psalm 1611, we can read, You make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. This verse emphasizes that true joy 
comes from being in alignment with the divine, being in his presence at all times, so we can experience the pleasures right before our very noses, which we often fail to see. Ernest Holmes, who's the founder of the Science of Mind philosophy, spoke of joy as an inherent aspect of our being. Joy is not in things. It is in us. Holmes reminds us with that statement that joy isn't dependent on external factors. Joy is found within ourselves through spiritual alignment. So if you're seeking joy or happiness outside yourself or from others, like from a new car, a new home, a new relationship, you are headed for failure. I'm not saying that those things would not put a smile on our faces and that smile is gone as soon as your house needs a repair or your car gets a little dent in it or that relationship turns into arguing or whatever it might be. Joy truly comes only from within. Throughout various spiritual teachings, there's a common thread that joy arises from connecting with our true essence, whether it's through prayer or meditation or acts of kindness. It's the recognition of our unity with the universe and the source of all existence. In today's reading, you heard the words of Ernest Holmes from The Science of Mind. Here's what he said. We are to rejoice evermore. There is no sadness in the spirit. It is happy and free, for it knows neither depression nor confusion, and we belong to it, or in and of it. Wow, we belong to it. We're in and of that happy and free nature. Buddha also spoke about joy, and his teachings also indicate that joy arises from within. He said, peace comes from within. Do not seek it without. For me, I know I can't have peace if I'm not living in joy. And this teaching really highlights the internal nature of joy. It stems from our state of mind and from our state of being, not from stuff. There's a young lady who worked at a cafe, and her name was Lily. And one day, it was during the holidays, with the hustle and bustle of the holiday season, and a group of hurried shoppers came in. They were trying to avoid the bustling streets, and they were probably hungry after doing a lot of their shopping. Well, Lily was a waitress that had an aura of tranquility and joy. Her eyes sparkled like the lights adorning the Christmas tree in the corner, and her smile was as bright as the festive decorations hanging from the ceiling. And in this particular evening, when this group of travelers stumbled into the cafe, they were looking for refuge from the cold. They had tons of bags and were burdened by the streets of last minute holiday shoppers. Lily greeted them with warmth, guiding them to a table near a crackling fire. And as she took their orders, she noticed the weariness in their eyes and the tension in their shoulders. And with a heart full of compassion, she went beyond her duties, offering them comforting words and a genuine care. She shared stories of the season, tales of hope, and moments of joy that she had encountered. Her simple gestures, a kind word here and a personal touch there, gradually thawed the icy stress that had enveloped all of those weary travelers. Laughter began to trickle through their conversations, replacing that tension with warmth. And before leaving, one of the travelers approached Lily Gratitude was shining in his eyes, and he just said, thank you for more than just the meal. 
you've given us a moment of respite, a glimpse of joy amidst the holiday chaos. Lily smiled. Her heart was beaming with happiness. In that small cafe, amid the holiday rush, she had found her own joy, not just in serving others, but in being a source of warmth and comfort in a hectic time for those travelers. As they departed, their spirits were lighter than when they had arrived, and Lily stood by the window and watched the snow fall gently outside. She knew that amidst the chaos, joy could always be found in simple acts of kindness and genuine connection. And in that moment, Lily felt the true essence of the season, love, kindness, and the joy of giving. You know, this story is a great example of what Thich Nhat Hanh once said. Sometimes your joy is the source of your smile. And sometimes your smile can be the source of your joy. When we bring joy to others, it returns to us and we feel lighter. The Course in Miracles talks about joy. The world you see merely represents your thoughts and it will change entirely as you elect to change your mind and choose the joy of God as what you really want. Yourself is radiant in this holy joy, unchanged, unchanging, and unchangeable forever and ever. Imagine a world in which we all chose the joy of God as what we really wanted. Wow, we'd all be wearing sunglasses from all of that light. So as we move through each experience in life, most of our reactions are automatic and they're often negative. Emotion reactions that we've learned as young kids, things that are learned habits. We literally are programmed from day one until that program is dissolved and replaced by another program. And by the time we're adults, we have a lot of unresolved experiences that many of our responses are automatically negative. And they perpetuate events that result in not the best outcome we make assumptions based upon the history instead of living in this moment. And of course, because the world in me is the world I see, I see events that only reinforce whatever I expect in my initial learning from a long time ago. We get caught in those negative emotional event cycles, and it's often based on past memories, things that we could let go of, but we don't. Just for a moment, let's look at the consciousness cycle. Notice in the lower vibrations and emotions such as guilt, fear, anger, pride, we are contracted. And please notice where joy is at the top of the list, above love and below peace. Wow, joy is above love and below peace. When we live in a state of joy, we're expanded and we can know God is for us and nothing is against us. And we're living in love of ourselves and of others. I have an exercise I'd like you to try this week. Whenever you're feeling anything other than joy, love, or peace, ask yourself this question. What would love do here? Positive behavior helps raise the vibrations of others involved. The goal is to be living life as much as possible from a place of love and joy, which is why we ask often, what would love choose? And if you're feeling negativity in any way, Think about whether you want to allow whatever's bothering you to steal your peace. If not, 
If you don't want it to steal your joy and your love and your peace, surrender that burden to the divine or ask for guidance about what your next step might be. I know when I was growing up, I was truly all about joy. And when things got difficult for me and my joy would dwindle, my mom would always ask me, what's going on? And I never thought that she noticed anything. And yet, she would say to me later, I noticed you're not living in your joy. So, I just invite us to notice when we're not living in a joy. A brilliant New Thought teacher called Emma Curtis Hopkins wrote this, The joy of the Lord is your strength. When you are joyful, when you say yes to life and have fun and project positivity all around you, you become a sun in the center of every constellation and people want to be near you. And so now you know why I love joy. Who wouldn't want to have life filled with fun and laughter and positivity? A life that attracts people to be around you so you can expand that positivity. Emma wasn't the only one who thought this way. Charles Fillmore, one of the founders of Unity, said, Joy is the great harmonizer and healer. It's the cosmic solvent that unifies all differences. It's the free-flowing river of good that washes away all obstacles. What a declaration about joy that is. I like the idea of living in joy and being a cosmic solvent that unifies all differences. Want to join me there, living in joy, washing away obstacles this week? And by the way, when it comes to joy, most religions have something to say about being positive and living in joy. Yogananda said, Joy is the manifestation of God awareness within oneself. It is God that one experiences as joy. And Rumi said, when you do things from your soul, you feel a river moving in you, a joy. Now, I want that river of joy moving in me. How about you? Imagine your life with you being aware that you are joy, because God is joy. A life in which you live from your soul and not from your head. I would love to live in this world. How about you? And Eckhart Tolle expressed how you might live from joy. Here's what he said. Joy does not come from what you do. It flows into what you do and thus into this world from deep within you. It's truly not in the doing that we bring joy. I'd be willing to wager that the best gift Lily gave to those people in the cafe was not the food she brought to the table to nourish them. Rather, it was herself that she gave to them, the smiles and the encouragement. Lily obviously practiced joy and love and was a living model of what Buddha said. Thousands of candles can be lighted from a single candle and the life of the candle will not be shortened. Happiness never decreases by being shared. Joy never decreases by sharing it. And I love how the Course in Miracles compares pain and joy. Pain is illusion, joy, reality. Pain is but sleep, joy is awakening. Pain is deception. Joy alone is truth. All of these quotes from different spiritual leaders emphasize the essence of joy as an internal state, an awakening to truth, 
a manifestation of our connection to something greater. And they let us know that there's an impact on our interactions with the world when we come from that place of joy. And joy keeps us from suffering and from pain. So in this holiday season and throughout the year, let joy not be a fleeting emotion. Let it be a presence, a steady presence in your life, a reminder of our spiritual nature and of the profound impact that giving joy to others has on bringing more peace and more love to this planet. So in summary, how might you fully embrace joy? Remember, joy is not merely an emotion. And remember that everything is going to be all right. Choose to live to praise God in every situation. And remind yourself, God is for you. Joy is not in things, it's in us. It arises from connecting with our true essence. So choose the joy of God as what you really want. Align yourself with that joy consciousness. Embrace positivity. And remember to ask, what would love do here? Don't allow anything to steal your peace or joy. And remember, joy is a free-flowing river of good that washes away obstacles. So here's your affirmation for the week. How is it I so willingly, joyfully, and effortlessly remember joy is not merely an emotion. Joy is in me and transcends circumstances and connects me to the divine. And it's the cosmic solvent that unifies all differences. So your challenge this week is to make a conscious choice to embrace joy. And whenever you're feeling anything other than joy, love, or peace, ask yourself, what would love do here? I invite you to check in with yourself every day. See how you're doing in remembering to allow joy to flow into all that you do. Let's pray. We take a deep nourishing breath. And what I know is God is joy and therefore I am joy. So I see each of us this week spreading joy during this holiday season, spreading our smiles, our words of encouragement, giving a little bit extra to someone that seems to be maybe a little bit stressed or a little bit hassled from all of the holiday season. Just allow joy to flow from you. I know that each of us is doing that and I am so grateful for that because we are raising the vibration of the planet, moving up from all of those lower vibrations to those vibrations in which we truly are engaged in love and joy and peace. Ah, so knowing that each of us is doing that this week, I am so grateful. And I release my words into that love, mind, spirit of action. And I know that the divine has already called it good, already said yes. So I can just say amen and we can affirm it together. And so it is. I want to thank everyone who continues to donate and invite you to remember our community in your Christmas giving. I am so grateful 
to be able to be in ministry in Louisiana and to feel all of the love that this community puts out into this area of our world. And knowing that that spreads across the world as well. Enjoy our offertory song. <laughs> 